Hi, I'm Ryan Axtell with Axtell Expressions, and I want to take a moment to walk you through uh, the audio setup for programming and recording routines for your hands-free magic drawing board, your hands-free light unit, which both of those use our hands-free light uh, controllers. You run the program out audio from that, or also our hands-free characters using our Magic 2 system. So the process for Recording routines is the same for both of these. Now, on a lot of laptops, there's been the ability to run our program out audio feed directly into the computer's built-in microphone input, and then we've been able to control the volume in Audacity to get the proper input gain. So the proper recording volume you want when recording a routine is negative 12 dB. As you can see right now, I have an external sound card hooked up and this is because this specific laptop does not let us plug a microphone input into the computer and control the volume and has a built-in microphone which isn't helpful for us we need a we need a, a line in and this computer uh, doesn't have it so you may be in a situation where your laptop doesn't let you physically uh, plug a microphone into it and control the uh, input gain so to, to get around that issue we have two options the first one is um, using an external USB sound card. These are uh, around $15. Uh, it's USB. You can see I have uh, an input for an audio source, and then I also have an output I could run to a speaker. So now in Audacity, if you take a look, you can see that I have my microphone set to my, uh, this is a Sound Blaster card. You can see that I'm, I'm telling it to listen to the first channel. Now, I already clicked the button that's up here that says click to start monitoring, so it looked like this for you. Now, if I click to start monitoring, you'll see my signal is way too hot. I'm actually clipping. Now, the problem with recording your signal too hot is it will distort your programming data coming into Audacity, which means any playback after that will be faulty. So it's very important that you make sure your recording input is set to negative 12. And to do that, I'm going to take my mouse up here by this microphone. This is Audacity's recording volume and it might be different for your computer but in Windows uh, applications can take over control of uh, external devices like this so this this recording volume is going to change our input gain on our uh, audio device and so as I lower this you'll see that my volume lowers to negative 12 okay so this would be a proper recording volume uh, and this is an example of an external sound card that works great Unfortunately, uh, it's, it can be hit and miss. So this one works great with this specific laptop, but these are two that have worked with previous laptops that don't really work with this one. So it's important that you find one that allows you to control the input gain. Some of them you'll get a signal in, but it's going to be too hot, or in some cases not loud enough, and you don't have the ability to uh, adjust that signal. So uh, another option that we'd like to show you is this audio interface. You can use many different audio interfaces uh, for recording music, but this is a very affordable one. It's the Behringer uh, UM2, and this is about $40. So let me show you how this works. So I have our Behringer audio interface hooked up. It's running USB as well. It's basically a big version of these little audio interfaces. Um, but one thing that's nice about these is you have audio outputs. So right now I actually have one of our channels running to our little monitor here, which is what I would do if I was programming along with a routine and needed to hear audio. The other reason we like these guys is there's a physical knob I can use to control our gain. And so right now you can see I have the gain uh, set pretty low on here. Uh, we're not adding any gain. And you can see my signal is a little too low. And so I'm just going to turn our input gain up until it hits 12. Okay, so again, I have proper input gain here, so all I was doing was adjusting our gain for our channel right here. Uh, another great feature about these boxes, and the reason we like this model, is it has a function called direct monitor. When this is engaged, it will allow audio to pass through from my input directly to my speaker without going to the laptop. This is great in a lot of situations, but for us, we actually want that feature turned off because if I turn it on, you're gonna hear the program data coming through directly to the speaker. And if I'm programming, I don't wanna hear that, I wanna hear just the voice that I'm programming. So all I have to do to turn that off is I turn off direct monitor. Now I can record. You can see I'm getting my signal recording. I'll stop that and then I'll, I'm going to set my output 
to also go to our USB device. And now I'll play that back. And you can hear playback. Another nice feature about uh, these audio interfaces is if you are running uh, your right channel to an audio speaker, you can run your left channel, again with your data pan left and your audio pan right, you could run that to your transmitter to program in, uh, and you could also put this to, to play away if you were running a hands-free light or remote magic drawing board. And then you can also use the output knob to fine tune uh, the signal going to the character. So we found sometimes an audio interface much like this is a great solution, but again, you may have luck on your specific computer finding a, um, a smaller USB uh, external audio card that works great. Um, so the key is you want to make sure that your input volume, record volume, is negative 12 dB. That gives you uh, the best consistency when programming.